Logos. Thanks to Jesus Christ, who is the Logos. The Logos, you better be afraid because that's a flaming sword. And that is going to reap and it's going to cut down. Anything that doesn't belong to it will be gone. It's just that simple. And that's what the word does. When you handle the word, yes, yes, the Bible has been called the word, but it's only the word for those vessels that were chosen and of the faith. And then, of course, when you handle the word, be very, very careful, my friends, because handling the word is like handling a nuclear weapon. You be very careful where you do, because when I pray, it's done. I don't know about you, but I have to be very careful in my prayers, not to be repetitive, because that's a good way to cause it not to be answered, to be in the flow. My life must be uh, like a temple, worship. Everything I do, sometimes in a day, can be in that flow. If I agree to become his vessel of light, then I will be coming up many octaves since all is relational to sound. All reality is based on sound. Sound you can't see or hear, feel, or touch necessarily, and some you can, but it's all frequency. Okay? The earth vibrates at a certain frequency. There's a certain key that it vibrates at a certain frequency. Some have said it's eight point something, some seven point something, whatever. But it has a sound. Every planet, the sun, the stars, the moon, everything is made up of sound. Sound is how you can actually, your heart would not beat if it didn't, if we didn't have a certain frequency here that would, would allow it to do so. It would not beat. It would cease beating. So the call is going out now to become this vessel of light, which, and you know what I'm talking about. Who else? will be chosen to do this, to go to and fro upon the earth, actually retuning the earth to a, a frequency that is called the thousand-year reign of Christ. You see why these angels are so upset? They wanted to be in the arena because this is like, you know, the arena. This is the big event. We're in it. This is kind of like uh, being in the... Uh, you know, in the ring in Madison Square Garden for the, you know, the big heavyweight championship of the world. Okay, this is the, this is the big event, the big war, the big drama. You don't think people, these spirit beings, they all want to get in on this. It's hard to, to incarnate. It's not easy for them to, to, to be physical. They can fly from here to there. Boom, boom, you know, like... How, uh, you know, like translation, we've seen that in the Bible where we have translation, like you, you're, you're there at the river, the next moment you're in, you're in a city 500 miles away. This is, this is called spiritual flight. It happens to vessels of light. This is the kind of thing when the, when the Bible says going to and fro, this is kind of, you know, you got a glimpse of what it really means. But again, like with Paul, you get a glimpse with Paul. He says he's been to the third heaven which means he's been smack dab in the middle of what I'm talking about. But he couldn't really stay there. That's why you have all the focus to become on the earth. Like with all those planets, wouldn't there be all kinds of other life and all this evolution and everything? Well, there's your mystery. What if the entire universe was created to play out this drama right here, right now, and you're a really important part of it? Yeah? What if that was true, that God would do all this not to have... Billions of other planets burgeoning with little life and little guppies and tadpoles coming up and eventually, you know, evolving <laughs> to uh, two leg creatures, bipeds and with brains and so forth. The brain is an access point to the. To the transformation process, meaning to return to who you really are. Well. Dense crap, identifying with the physical rather than the spiritual. You know, wondering about um, people, you know, following me, even though uh, every time the Lord, you know, my angels have taken care of it. Well, they're my, they're, you're not my angels. I mean, you're assigned to me. But let's say this, that you've swatted them down at every turn. So why shouldn't I just go with that and say, okay, I've got to, 
that mechanism, you know, not worry, oh, one day it might not be there. It's been there since I was a baby, so I guess it's going to be there. If God wanted me out of here, he'd take me out of here, and it wouldn't be there. But, but there'd be a reason for it. Therefore, I have nothing to worry about. There's no reason I can't just move forward into being a vessel of light rather than a vessel of darkness into emancipation, which is the graduation into the supernatural, you know, which the occultist and the spiritualist, they're just dying to, they're so jealous of you because they know they were not chosen and they have to jimmy themselves in there, you know, from Madame Blavatsky and, you know, um, all these practitioners, which, which eventually just you realize all the Masons, secret societies, all these people, um, yes, they interact with uh, disincarnate beings, which they conjure through doing nasty rituals. And, and some, I guess, not so nasty, but, you know. Um, but still, they're locked at the gate. They can't get further than that. Some of them, you know, have, have maybe become like Nimrod and become sort of like them and been, ha have powers that they can show you. But all they're going to say in the end is the material trumps the spirit. And they'll have all these powers. Say, so you can have all these powers, but still, as long as you agree to bow down to flesh and not spirit. You know, that's what it comes down to. Flesh, spirit. Symbolically, flesh, Satan, spirit, God. You know, but it's, that's not really uh, explaining it all. 